Today we will be going through the events of the 1993 Christmas Halloween stop-motion breakthrough hit The Nightmare Before Christmas, directed by Henry Selick. As the opening credits fade, we are introduced to a stop-motion world so fantastical that it's hard to believe. A narrator voices over as we see several trees with different holiday symbols painted on them. Then we go to Halloween Town as many ghoulish characters sing This is Halloween, which, like the rest of the music, was written by the wonderful Danny Elfman. We're introduced to several of the main characters during this opening sequence, including a two-faced mayor, a clown with a tear-away face, two witches, and many more. But the most important character is introduced at the end of the song, Jack Skellington. We also notice a woman, Sally, watching the festivities from a distance. We soon find out that she's escaped from her master who made her, and she's not supposed to be out of the house. But she slipped her creepy master a little bit of nightshade, which put him to sleep. The whole town is celebrating a successful Halloween, and everyone is congratulating Jack on his role, but he seems a little hesitant to bask in the glory. He sneaks away as the mayor gives out superlatives to the other townsfolk. As he's leaving, he mentions that this year was just like every other year, hinting to us that he wants something different. As he walks through the graveyard, he calls to his ghost dog, Zero, and Sally watches from afar. He breaks into a song that explains how Halloween has become so easy and boring for him and he wants a new challenge. He's not sure he's fulfilling his full purpose and he's growing weary of the sounds of screams. He walks to the edge of a hill in front of a full moon and longingly sings as he searches for something more. As Jack walks away, Sally says to herself that she knows how he feels. She then picks some more nightshade and stashes it away when she gets home. Soon, her master, a creepy scientist in a wheelchair, comes down and reattaches her arm, which she pulled off to get away from him. They argue about how she is restless and wants to get away, but he assures her it is just a phase. The next morning, the mayor approaches Jack's house to begin planning next Halloween, but when he rings the bell and knocks, Jack doesn't seem to be there. The butlers at the house explain he didn't come home last night. The scene shifts to Jack, still walking through the woods as the sun is rising. He finds himself in the middle of several trees with different holiday symbols painted on them and doors on each. His eyes fall on a Christmas tree, and he opens the door. A cold wind sucks him into the tree, and he falls into a winter wonderland. Jack finds himself in Christmas Town, and he sings an excited song called What's This? as he takes in all of the snow, lights, presents, mistletoe elves, and other Christmas staples. We can tell that the town and its joy completely enthralls Jack and his sense of imagination, and it's a direct contradiction to his dark Halloween town. After his song, he sees Santa and gets an idea. Meanwhile, back in Halloween town, we see the mayor frantically searching for Jack. Everyone says they've looked everywhere but can't find him. They sound an alarm which notifies Sally that something is wrong. In order to get away, she puts more nightshade in her master's soup. He's suspicious of the soup, but she craftily convinces him it's okay, and he eats it. This causes him to pass out so she can escape. Just as the mayor and the town have given up hope, Jack comes back to town and has a big package behind him. He says there must be a town meeting immediately so he can tell them something. The whole town gathers in the meeting hall, including Sally. Jack tells them all about Christmas Town and explains the concept of gift-giving and Christmas to them. He reveals that the best part of all is Sandy Claus. The townspeople don't seem to quite get the whole thing, but Jack isn't going to give up. Later that night, Jack retreats to his room to read about Christmas and try to figure out how to explain it to everyone else better. The next morning, Jack shows up to the scientist's house just after he's locked Sally back away, chastising her for her escaping again. Jack says he needs some supplies for experiments. He then takes several of the supplies from the scientist back to his house to try to understand Christmas on a scientific level. He dissects toys and boils down ornaments, hoping to understand the meaning of Christmas, but mostly to no avail. He spends his whole day trying to understand. Meanwhile, Sally once again escapes, this time by jumping out the window and then putting herself back together with a needle and thread. She brings a basket of goodies to Jack, but leaves before he can say much to her. It's obvious she has a crush on him. As she leaves, she has a vision of a Christmas tree burning, foreshadowing that maybe something bad will happen if they try to take over Christmas. The townspeople are beginning to worry about Jack because he's locked himself away trying to figure out the key to Christmas. He wants to know what it means. He's had an epiphany that maybe he can improve Christmas time. He announces that this year, Christmas will be ours. 
He divides rolls out to all the townsfolk to make Christmas. Three children called Boogie's Boys show up, and it's clear that most people don't like them. Jack tells them he's got a special job for them and sends them away. As they're leaving, he reminds them to leave Oogie Boogie out of it. We see the three children leave, singing a creepy song about kidnapping Sandy Claws. They betray Jack's wishes, though, and say that they're going to help Oogie Boogie, who they describe as the meanest guy around, take over the whole thing. They head towards Christmas Town to complete their task. Jack continues to give out rolls, but Sally tells him about her vision. She tries to warn him that Christmas is going to be a disaster, but he doesn't listen. He just hurries her along to help make his Santa Claus outfit. Soon after, the Boogie Boys show up with the Easter Bunny. Jack sends them back to get Santa Claus this time. The scene cuts to a montage of the village putting together toys, decorations, and more Christmas items, but they all have a very dark vibe to them. For example, they turn a toy duck into an evil-looking toy with teeth. Another group stuffs a scorpion inside a doll. We get the sense that many of these presents probably would scare kids more than excite them. We also see that the scientist is putting together some skeleton reindeer for Jack to fly with. Jack's sleigh also has a coffin on it, a much different sleigh than the typical one. Finally, it is one day before Christmas. We see Santa checking his list, but he gets kidnapped by the Boogie Boys. Meanwhile, Sally gives Jack his Santa outfit, but warns him again that he is not at all like himself. The Boogie Boys show up with Santa, and Jack tells him he's so excited to meet him. He tells Santa not to worry about Christmas this year because they're going to take care of it. Jack then steals his hat and tells the Boogie Boys to keep Santa comfortable. They decide to take him to Oogie Boogie. Oogie Boogie, now revealed as a ghoulish figure who is full of bugs and worms and terrorizes Santa Claus. Oogie Boogie tells Santa he's stuck with him. Sally decides she's going to try to stop Jack by creating a fog. She pours fog potion into the town fountain right before Jack is set to take off. The fog grows so thick that Jack is worried they won't be able to take off. He nearly resigns himself that his dreams have been dashed, but then he notices that his dog, Zero, has a shiny nose. He puts him in front of the sleigh and then flies away to deliver a special Halloween Town Christmas to the world. Sally looks on worryingly and hopes her premonition is wrong. She says she wishes she could stand behind Jack, but she's just trying to warn him. Jack flies around the world and leaves the Halloween Town presents all around. As the children begin opening their toys, the toys are attacking them and generally gruesome. All of the children are terrified by Christmas instead of delighted. All of the houses begin to lock their doors and turn on their fireplaces to keep Santa out. The police send the military to try to stop Jack, but he mistakes their guns as celebration shots. Finally, one shot hits the sleigh and knocks them out of the sky. The townsfolk have a looking glass that shows them what's going on, and the whole town looks on in horror as Jack falls from the sky. The mayor cries out that Jack has been blown to smithereens. Sally decides that she has to save Santa so Santa can save Christmas. She tricks Oogie Boogie and tries to help Santa escape, but Oogie Boogie catches them before they can leave. Jack survives the fall, but realizes that he was a fool to think he could do Christmas as well as Santa. He is depressed and distraught. After talking through it a bit, he says he did his best, and it allowed him to see that he really is the Pumpkin King, and he can't wait until next Halloween. He embraces his role as the King of Halloween, but also wants to fix Christmas and save Santa. He rushes back to Halloween Town to try to save Santa and Sally. Jack arrives just as Sally and Santa are about to be put into boiling lava by Oogie Boogie. He catches them as they are about to fall and then confronts Oogie Boogie. Oogie Boogie is on his home turf, so he has several traps that he set against Jack, but Jack deftly avoids them and continues to pursue Oogie Boogie. Ultimately, Jack gets hold of a loose thread of Oogie Boogie's and pulls it until he comes completely unraveled. Oogie Boogie falls apart into a mess of bugs and Jack frees Santa. Santa assures him that he will fix Christmas, but that Jack should listen to Sally next time. Santa flies around the world and replaces the scary gifts with good ones. Santa causes it to snow in Halloween Town, and the monsters all see the joy that Jack felt when he first visited Christmas Town. Sally leaves the town as everyone is having a good time, and Jack follows her out to the same hill he started his journey on. He sings a song to her and tells her that he wants to be with her and work as a team from now on. They sing, We're simply meant to be in unison as Zero looks on. Hope you liked this recap of The Nightmare Before Christmas. Now comment on what your favorite part was and make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our